speaking about that and thinking about that, it got me thinking and looking up and checking Primavera Sound 2023 Festival lineup, which just finished this past weekend, I think. And God almighty, man, I, I think I purposely ignored it because my plan was to go, but then I checked the flights for this time of the year, like June, when it started, um, when it was around, I think May, June, whatever. And the flights were just crazy. Like, I, I don't know what's happened. I'm sure you guys have seen it in the States um, and other places around the world. I think flights have just increased weirdly over time. I think last time we went to Primavera Fest Sound Festival, other times I've been to Prim I've been to Barcelona specifically to go and run half marathons or just to go and hang out and stuff. I've been there a few times. The flights have been no more than like 250 pounds, no more than that, even during the peak seasons. But this time around, I was looking for flights for June-ish um, to go to Primavera Sound, end of May, beginning of June. And the prices were like 400 pounds. It almost doubled. And this is without even buying the ticket to go to the festival, which is still, it's pricey, but I think it's probably the most um, value for money you're going to get. Because I think it's like a five-day festival. It's £250. And it's honestly one of the best cities in the world um, in terms of food and, you know, gastronom gastronomy, I guess you call it, right? Um, in terms of food and drink culture and stuff, it's fucking amazing. Great restaurants, great bars, um, you know, just f sensational. I, don't, I think the last time we went there in 2018, we kept picking random cool little breakfast spots to go to in the morning to go get like you know fucking spanish omelets and i don't know fucking peppers and shit like whatever and legitimately like we there was no bad restaurant you could pick no bad little cafe that you could pick just by checking the star ratings or like google maps and shit like they were all sensational so the food in barcelona is really high the level so even though you're paying a lot for the ticket festival you're also getting a lot just from the city like walking around, it's a really easy walkable city, good food, good drink, blah, blah, blah. But having to pay £400 to go there just seemed insane. So I think I purposely, you know, did a little bit of a command backspace on Primavera and didn't really remember the flipping whole festival vibe. But I just double checked the lineup now again on the website. And oh my God, man, the lineup for this festival was legitimately insane, right? And you've already got here um, Pet Shop Boys playing. Uh, you got Blur, Horsey, New, uh, New Order, Dark Side Ghost, one of my favorite metal bands. Uh, you got Turnstile, one of my favorite fucking, I guess you're going to be calling them hardcore bands. Central C playing there, Pusha T playing there, Rema playing there. Um, too many amazing, of course. Then you got the second day, you had um, Kendrick Lamar, the Pesh Mode headlining, Baby Keem, Fortet, Fred again, Skrillex. Like insane, insanely, insanely powerful 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 lineup and just again like i said the best value for money because it covers such a wide barometer of people but one thing i remember when i went to primavera town festival was how interesting it was to see who the actual big acts were from like hip-hop and shit because sometimes i think because i consume a lot of american content I see a lot of these big American rappers on the American side of things playing at like Rolling Louds and stuff. And you think certain people are big, but then there's people that perform at Rolling Loud, then try and do their own tour and it doesn't really sell as well or whatever it may be. And so to realize, oh, there's a, there's a difference like in terms of that like, scale and another them to try and like, you know, tour internationally and doesn't do too well. Just to realize like there's a real difference between like being like popular in the US in with a certain crowd at a festival being popular by yourself touring the country and also being able to tour the world the, you know, the rest of the world because you know rest of the world isn't as obsessed with america as maybe america is obsessed with itself which makes sense so one thing i realized a lot when i went to primavera sound was how popular somebody like an asap rocky was because i legitimately was one of those people that always thought like why does asap rocky keep getting headlining spots at these festivals like he hasn't put out an album in years he hasn't been I wouldn't say even relevant. He hasn't been as big as he once was many years ago in a long time. Um, obviously, the, the Rihanna relationship maybe helps things along, but usually no one's booking you for a big festival because you happen to date one of the biggest pop stars and what doesn't make any sense. But when Ace of Rocky touched that stage in Primavera, all my doubts about him went away. The crowd went crazy. And I realized, oh, Rocky might not be like the most current 
rapper in the world, but he's definitely one of the most popular international because that's an international audience. And it made a lot of sense. Like when he came on the screens, like Primavera had these screens, which are really cool, which I, the first time I actually saw them in the festival, where obviously you had the, got the stage and had the cameraman zooming into the, per, per, the person performing and then projecting that shot on the screen. So if you're standing far away, you could see them. And every time his face came on the fucking screen, the girls would be screaming. I, I've never heard, scre- the only, heard, only time I've heard screams like that before in my life was like, you know, when you see clips of like K-pop people coming out of hotel rooms and shit, like honestly, the girls and the gays were legitimately screaming for Rocky. He'd be like on the stage in between the songs, smiling and shit with all these little, you know, with these fucking grills shining in the sun, in the bus on the sun, coming on the screen and then people would be screaming. His tracks would come on, they'd be seeing it word for word. I'd be like, oh, that's what a superstar looks like. And again, he's not the most current guy in the world. Hasn't had an album in, out in a long time. No big number one hits and shit. But still, somebody that's been able to kind of sustain a real monumental kind of appeal and pull to people. And one other person who I thought I went to highlight, and I saw a clip just now on YouTube, which is interesting about it, international, international audience-wise, especially for people that are American-based, listen to my podcast and stuff. It's interesting to see who is internationally really highly regarded from like American rappers. One person who's supremely popular, especially in the UK, especially in Europe, oddly enough, which I've always under- I've always kind of never really understood why that's the case, actually, when you could consider his content and uh, his lyricism and his perspective is very, you know, it's from a very particular um, way of looking at things as a kind of young black man growing up in LA. It's Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is such a big deal in the UK. It's such a big deal in Europe and beyond. People love him here. Love him insanely. Like his tracks come on in like regular bars or regular clubs here in London, full of flipping white people who you think maybe wouldn't give a fuck about him. And they know all the fucking lyrics word for word. And the thing you have to understand in Europe also, we have an amazing culture or a thing that we do here where it's really kind of, encourage for you to go to a festival and a performance and legitimately sing shit word for word like it's kind of a badge of honor to go to a show and know all the words you don't just stand there and look cool you actually have go there and have a good time so when you see these shows and performances legitimately people are going there to kind of like show off and let the artists know hey i'm an actual fan of yours i fucking think you're awesome so i'm gonna sing and scream these bars word for word so you can hear me and legitimately this clip taken from the primavera sound festival just happened recently now um with Kendrick Lamar performing Money Trees is a good example of it. Like, just hear the fucking crowd. They are going crazy. I feel 
no, nah, no, nah, Kendrick is too hard. Honestly, Kendrick is too hard. It's making me smile so much. It brings back so many. It brings back so many. Natasha is singing. Yeah, you know it, Natasha. You know. Honestly, this brings back such good fucking memories. There's something almost euphoric, I swear to God, about being surrounded by people that you don't fucking know from Adam or Eve singing along to one of your favorite fucking artists it's almost magical i swear to god in the sun like i remember that's one thing because i'm i've always had a so i'm flipping this coffee is making me go crazy i've always had an issue flipping digesting fucking beer and shit right but there's something about drinking beer which i don't usually drink because it doesn't sit right with me under the sun in Barcelona with like randoms from all over the world um singing along to your favorite artist that just hits different like legit like I was drinking beer the entire time I was out there like and I don't drink beer on a daily it's not something I do and I was loving it and it was such a good vibe man it was like a flipping amazing time and everyone's singing along to the raps and shit and then me realizing in real time wow this person's really big that person's really big like it's just fucking phenomenal to check out and I think it's interesting because I'm, I also wonder, like, what do you have to do if you're an American artist, especially a rapper, right? Like, how do you figure out or how do you kind of approach trying to be international? Like, how do you get there? You know, like, w what do you speak about? Is it just being entirely authentic about your experience and where you've kind of grown up? Because it's a universal sort of story everyone has, right? Of struggle and pain and disappointment and setback and blah, blah, blah. Is it a particular sound? Is it the way Kendrick enunciates? You know, he's, 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 he's got amazing stage presence. He doesn't dance or do any theatrics on stage, but he can hold and command the entire stage on his own. He enunciates really well. He's obviously very lyrical and, you know, what's somewhat intellectual you want to call it, very introspective. I don't know what it is but it must be cool if you're an american artist that does pretty well home to also come abroad and have the same amount of love if not more from people who don't usually get to see all the time because you know the american audience you guys get spoiled with these guys because they're home based they're playing all the time you know you can see them whenever but us europeans or us people from overseas we don't really have that option people don't come here often enough if they do they want to you know go to big do big shows and they're afraid they book the big shows and doesn't sell it looks embarrassing blah 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 so it's hard to get these guys to come over but when they do come over we let them know hey we pre we're happy to have you here do you know what i mean we want to we want you to know that we're big fans we want to give you that love so that you come back again and the singing along culture of it is just like supreme and i can't imagine how amazing that must have felt but then the other clip that i saw that i thought was even more amazing than that was this clip of rosalia performing at flipping primavera sound festival rosalia performing this this special which this special might be my favorite track from the recent album it's a fucking bop right absolute bop right and can you imagine how electric it must have been to see Rosalia performing, especially when you can think about her career and it's gone, right? She's kind of blown up over the last few years. To see Rosalia performing in her hometown, Barcelona, after the success that she's had, touring the world, doing whatever she's been doing, growing big, getting big, amazing collabos and shit, artistry on fleek, live show going crazy, like all the endorsements, just amazing artists in general. And then to come back home, kind of like a bit of a homecoming and say, hey, here's what i've been doing since i've been away like hit this one in the spanish-speaking country <sighs> yo they are singing this shit word for fucking word and if you know anything about rosalia she has very interesting inflection and enunciations and the way she kind of like you know uses her voice as an instrument and they are doing all of it all of it it's fucking incredible watch it hear this clip <laughs>
yo, it's so loud. I know the recording, the guy's probably like got his mouth right next to the mic anyway, but it's so loud. <laughs> The crowd is singing along so loud you can barely hear Rosalia through the microphone. That is insane fan love, as DJ Khaled would say. That fan love is on another level. It's so loud that you can barely hear her. God bless her. You can barely fucking hear her. <laughs> <laughs> And usually in some cultures, right, in some, not in some cultures, in some countries or in some, with some people, usually when it's like a breakdown on a track, you're usually let, let, let the person do their thing. Like it's kind of looked down upon. There's been a couple of videos of like um, Beyonce live and she's been doing some of her runs and it's kind of like an, it's kind of like a not, it's kind of like a not polite thing to do to kind of like sing along at top of voice while she's doing her little runs. You kind of let her kind of have a breakdown. But <laughs> I love how in Europe, that's not a thing. We don't give a fuck. We sing the whole thing through, <laughs> like karaoke. So even this little section of the special where it's kind of meant to be a time for her to kind of do her thing, people are still singing along to it. I fucking love it. <laughs> I don't care man honestly honestly man Ugh. i need to get out to festivals asap i'm missing them so much i'm hearing people fucking complain about their friends going on holidays and stuff is legitimately making me remember how amazing and how interesting and fun and diabolical and disastrous that first time we went to primavera was and one of our friends just went flipping insane um and we just finally, you know, decided, hey, between us, hey, we're not going to go on holiday with her again, <laughs> quietly. And Seven should probably decide the same thing too. But man, when it works, it fucking works. Honestly, when it works, it fucking works. So yeah, Primavera Sound, one of the best festivals in the world. If you're looking for something to do inside that kind of field, I recommend you check it out because legitimately is one of the best festivals in the world. I guarantee you 